This is the story of the modern banana. The modern banana is both a miracle of biology and an incredible biological disaster. First, unlike most other fruit, there's mostly one type of banana that gets eaten all over the world. It is the Cavendish banana. If you have bananas at home, there is a 99% chance that it is a Cavendish banana. And this banana is a clone. Every one of the 100 billion Cavendish bananas eaten throughout the world every year is genetically identical to each other. So why are bananas clones? Well, let's think for a minute about how we get plants. We need to plant seeds. Seeds grow in the part of the plant that becomes the fruit. But bananas have no seeds, so you cannot grow new bananas using the bananas that we do eat. Wild bananas, on the other hand, do have seeds. But of course, as you can see in this picture of a wild banana with seeds, this would be very difficult to eat. So through the process of domestication, people found a way of developing seedless bananas. To do this, we use a process called vegetative propagation. No seeds are planted. All you need is one banana plant. And at the bottom of the banana plant, uh, tiny, smaller stems grow out called suckers. And so if a sucker is removed from the base of the banana plant and planted somewhere else, the sucker will actually grow into a new banana plant and will eventually produce the fruit, the banana. But there would be seedless. This new plant is genetically identical to the parent plant, and that's how plantations are made. Suckers are removed from plants and planted somewhere else, and eventually you end up with what is called a monoculture, and that's when all plants in a farm or a plantation are genetically identical to each other. So back to the Cavendish banana. It turns out that when your grandparents were young, or at least most of your grandparents, depending on how old they are, the Cavendish banana was not the banana. Up until the 1950s, the one banana that was sold worldwide was a much better tasting banana called the Gros Michel or Big Mike banana. So what happened? Sadly, it was killed off by a fungal infection called Panama disease. It turns out that growing a monoculture comes with a very significant biological danger. And this is because of a lack of what we call genetic diversity. Since every banana plant is essentially genetically identical to each other, a disease that kills one plant will also kill the rest. If one plant is killed by a disease, it means that there, it has no protection against the disease, so all its clones will be similarly affected by the disease. So Panama disease started to actually wipe out banana plantations as early as 1890. Seen from above, the plantations across Latin America, Africa, and throughout the world started to look like just lights had been turned off. Patches of bright green went black, whole landscapes went black within a year of a disease arriving at a plantation. And once devastated, plantations had to be abandoned because it turns out that the fungus that causes the disease can survive in the soil for decades. So by the 1950s, all plantations worldwide were pretty much destroyed. So banana corporations were finding themselves in big trouble. They had to try to find a solution or risk going out of business. And the fungus could not be destroyed, no matter what they tried. So the only thing to do was just to find another banana, one that was actually resistant to the fungus so it could be planted on the abandoned land. And the only banana that seemed to be both resistant to the fungus and similar to the Gros Michel banana, was a banana that came from a greenhouse owned by Sir William Cavendish, a British duke. And this was the Cavendish banana. Unfortunately, according to accounts, I've never tasted a Gros Michel banana, but according to accounts, the Cavendish banana tasted very different than the original Gros Michel banana. It was much less sweet, and consumers were initially not happy with the change. But by 1965, there was no choice. The Gros Michel banana had disappeared completely. The Cavendish banana could be planted in the same plantations where banana disease fungus was still present. So it became today's banana. And that would be the end of the story. Except for one thing. This is not a happy story. Remember the slides? These are not from the 1950s. Those photographs were taken here in 2019. As a matter of fact, since the 1990s, a new strain of the Panama disease fungus 
has been successfully destroying Cavendish banana plantations worldwide. The disease has been named TR4 for Tropical Race 4. Scientists have been hired by banana corporations to try to combat the disease, but they're losing the fight. Um, the disease is extremely difficult to fight, and once it arrives in one plantation, essentially it will destroy it within a year. So one solution that scientists are looking at might involve actually genetically modifying the Cavendish banana uh, in order to make it resistant to the fungus that causes the disease. But another solution might just to find a new banana. So just like your great-grandparents and grandparents grew up with a banana that you never got to taste, your children may also never get a chance to taste a Cavendish banana. There are a few banana breeds that are candidates for becoming a new banana. There's the Lakitan banana. It's a very popular banana in the Philippines. It has a good amount of beta carotene, which gives it a sort of a yellow orangey color. There's the apple banana. Apparently this banana has a creamy consistency. And very interestingly, when young, they taste tangy with notes of apple, but when ripe, they become more tropical with hints of pineapple and strawberry. And there's also the goldfinger banana. And some say that this is actually the best candidate to replace the Cavendish because of its pest and disease resistance. It is especially resistant to the fungus that causes Panama disease and TR4. So this might become our new banana. Now, the, I've never tasted a goldfinger banana, but I've seen some accounts of people who have tasted it. And apparently it tastes pretty good, but it has a slightly acidic taste. So there you go. This might be our future banana. I mean, the Cavendish banana has not disappeared yet, but it's not looking good. The story of the banana can be used as a warning against the use of monocultures. And well, the drawbacks of asexual reproduction in general, which is a topic that we will discuss in more detail in the next lesson. Talk to you soon.